but I always want to dance with him. <laughs> I don't really slow, too slow. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. We're not going to catch the moment because I know it's getting late. And, uh, but it's been good Amen. to be in the house of the Lord. So I'm just going to share for a little bit. The Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you that this year is fastly coming to an end. We have something to look forward to. We have a new year full of opportunities, full of opportunities to be more compassionate to your creation, to be more loving to each other, to be more concerned about others than we are about ourselves. And we come humbly, Father, thanking you for the year that you have blessed us with. And we're looking forward, Lord, to what you have for us. As individuals, as a family, and as a body of believers in this church, we come before you with great expectations, with an open heart. And we ask that you fill us, Father. Fill us with your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Needless to say, if anybody knows me, I'm not a procrastinator up to a point. I do know this, that if the Lord lets me live, I'll be preaching next Sunday. So I'm not going to wait till Saturday to go, get, to, to go and get all excited about preparing a message. So I'm generally a week ahead of time. In fact, I'm also working on about the next six, six weeks of next year. So, you know, I'm not laying around with my feet propped up drinking coffee. Now, I am drinking coffee, I guarantee you that. Uh, and if you want to have something with me, just come to the office. I get here about 5, 5.30 in the morning. So y'all come on and have a cup with me. But the message is entitled, as we close this year, we start out next year, something good is going to happen. Well, I think we've already experienced something good is going to happen this morning. Amen. We've experienced the power of God. As the Holy Ghost moved across this sanctuary this morning. I'm so thankful God didn't say you had to have 25,000 for Him to move. He said all you have to do is have an open heart. A broken, contrite spirit. And then He says we're two or more together. He's in the midst. Well, He was in the midst of us this morning. Amen. And I pray that this, this will go on into next year, which is only a few more days. But something good is going to happen. Psalms chapter 62 verses 5 through 8. Now I believe there's something about reading the Word of God. When you hear the Word of God, it's deeply implanted into your spirit. And it will produce fruit in given time. Verse 5 reads that Psalm 62 verses 5 through 8. My soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense, I shall not be moved. And God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Something good is going to happen. As we thank God, and I do thank God for 2014, we had 21 baptisms here. And it's not up to me <coughs> to go out and bring them back in. Or it's not up to me to do this. It's up to me to share the Word of God and let the Holy Ghost work. Amen. But remember, we all have been given a free will and a free choice to make decisions to make choices, whether you make those decisions and choices based on the Word of God on your knees and praying or not, that's between you and God. Then we had seven more from the chaplain at OCC. His church, God blessed him with, he had seven baptisms from his church. So out of this baptistry, this, past, this year, 2014, 28 souls met Jesus Christ. Now I'll tell you what, the size of our church compared to how many is pretty good, so something good has taken place. We've had healings here at this church, physical, spiritual, and mental. But we need to look ahead now. 
This year is about past. Now we can let it enter in. We need to look ahead to 2015, which is only a few days from now. I'm not going to be drunk with wine or alcohol, but I will be drunk in the Holy Ghost. So if a cop would pull me over and stop me and want me to get out the car, he would take one look and he would get drunk too. And there would be two of us that is drunk. But we're drunk in the Holy Ghost, not in alcohol. I don't believe in alcohol. I don't fool with alcohol. I don't want alcohol. But I do want the Spirit of God to flood my soul and to touch my spirit so that I can not only see, but I can proclaim the Word of God Amen. to all. And God is doing a tremendous job. But we need an outreach here. Anybody, Brother Steve, the evangelist, we need to have an outreach. We need some door knocking. We need to door knocking and get out and introduce people to Jesus, invite them to come and taste of the wine that God has given us, and that wine is the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. And we will have the Lord's table this coming first Sunday in January as we look forward to participating in what God is going to do. Isn't it great for God to allow us to participate in His work? And that's what He's doing here at the Father's house. We're not so big you can't get involved, but we're not so little to where you don't count. Amen. You're very important to us. You're very important to us. And I want you to know that. When you become family, ain't nobody going to fool with my family. Amen. It would be like almost somebody wanting to fool with Inez. You better leave her alone. But I'm not too far. She's got four or five dogs too. So amen. <laughs> Praise God. But amen. This is my family. And ain't nobody going to fool with my family. Amen. And I got some backup with that too. Amen. We got some pretty good sized men here. Amen. That's going to be right with us together, taking care of each one of y'all. So y'all feel free to call if you have a need. Amen. Because we're here for you. Amen. But so our expectations of this coming year uh, is to be looking forward to a joyful, exciting, peaceful, prosperous year. Isn't that great? I love those words. Amen. But how can this take place? Let me just share this for a few moments. Amen. If y'all give me the pleasure of it. First of all, verse 5 says of Psalm 62, it says, My soul waiteth thou only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. Something good is going to happen. How? Why? What can we do? By waiting on God. Let God be God. Let God move in our lives. Let God be the God who say, He says He is. We need to be completely dependent upon God. Somebody says, yeah, but I can get up and work and I can do this. Well, that's all good. But remember who's giving you the strength to do it. Yeah. Remember who has given you what you have. Nothing has come. You have not earned anything that God has not allowed you to earn. Right. Amen? I'm waiting on God. I've been waiting on God. But we see it's a miracle, so aren't we? I'm a walking miracle. I'm a walking testimony. I'm a walking individual that has been touched by God, not only physically, but spiritually and mentally as well. Yes, I've had cancer. Yes, I've had a heart attack. Yes, I've fallen 16 foot or 13 foot and hit the slab of the church we was building down south. Yes, I was in a car wreck that destroyed a complete brand new car. Yes, that's right before we come up here. And then I had cancer and a heart attack up here. Jesus says, son, you do what I want you to do and I'm going to take care of you. The devil wants to knock me down. The devil wants to close the doors of this church. The devil don't want to see people healed. The devil don't want to see people saved. The devil don't want to see people, amen, move in the spirit. The devil wants to see this church fight. The devil wants to see born-again believers fight with one another. But I'm here to tell you, we're not putting up with that because Jesus Christ is the Lord here. Amen. 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 And anybody that... And I'm just going to be honest because I pray and y'all pray and I'm on my face a lot. Anytime the devil sends somebody here to cause trouble, the Holy Ghost is going to take them out. Amen. 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 That's a big amen. So I'm not looking for a hundred people. I am looking for as many people as God sends here to worship Him and to pray to Him and to give Him glory and to lay hands and people are set free, healed and delivered. Amen. That's the most important thing. Amen. By waiting on... Y'all with me this morning? Let's have a shout. Woo! Hallelujah! 
Yeah, well, they'd like to have them like him. But he is. He's trying to destroy the church. He wants to. He don't mind churches growing that who worship themselves, who put themselves on platforms. He don't have a problem with that. He does have a problem with those who surrender to him. Amen. God has all the answers, brothers and sisters. No problem that you have or will have that God doesn't have an answer to. Mm -hmm. That's the God I serve. Amen. When you wait upon God, the new King James says, wait in silence. Be silent. Get off by yourself. What are we waiting on? We're waiting upon God's revelation. Amen? By waiting on God, we've given Him a chance to get things in order, just like I just gave with that testimony. A lot of times we pray, and I listen to men, godly men praying, and they pray, and God don't answer the way that they want it answered, and they wonder why. Well, I don't have a problem. I pray, get out of the way, and I'll let God have His way. He answers according to His will, not according to my will. I can look at you, and I can say, well, this is what I see. God looks beyond that, though. And God knows exactly what you need before you even need it. That's why we wait on God. We don't get in a big hurry. Just say, God, here I am. But if you can answer a little quicker, I'd appreciate it. But if not, that's okay. Because I put my trust. I am dependent totally and completely upon you. I want y'all to know this. As we end this year and start off next year, God is a revealing God. God doesn't have any secrets hid from you. When you get on your face, open up His Word, and you pray, God is going to reveal what you need at that exact moment to bring you into the next moment. Amen? He's going to do that. God, I believe this, God wants all things open to us if we're willing to allow the openness to come in. A lot of times, the greatest hindrance to the openness of God in our heart is ourselves. Because we really don't want to hear what God's got to say. We want God to say what we want God to say in order to pacify ourselves. I'm here to say this. God, I don't need no pacification if that's a word. If it's not, it's okay too. We just made one up. Amen? But what I do need is to be in your presence, to hear from you, to hear what your spirit is telling my spirit. Somebody say, Preacher, does God speak to you today? I said, Yes, He does. He's done spoke to me in many different ways right here in this sanctuary. He's done revealed things that was going to take place before they were going to take place. And He gave me an answer to give before it even taken place. Yes, God speaks to me. Well, somebody might say, Well, Preacher, will God speak to me? <coughs> yes, He will. And He'll speak to you the way that you're capable of receiving Whichever that might be. But God, God doesn't have anything hid from us. By faith I believe. Faith is believing in something that you can't see. The Bible says in Hebrew chapter 11 verse 6, if I'm not mistaken, without faith it's impossible to please God. Well, I want to please God because by faith I believe He's going to do what His Word says that He's going to do. It's not about me anyway. It's all about Jesus. It's not about this church anyway. It's all about the kingdom of God. Amen? Praise the Lord. You know, we get into trouble when we try to solve our own problems. Can I have an amen on that? We get into big trouble. We don't know, nor do we have the answers. When we get in a hurry, we get into trouble. Let's don't be in a hurry. One can make decisions that don't line up with the Word of God. God will not change His Word to pacify anybody. God's Word is written. God's Word will stand the test of time. And by the way, the Word is Jesus Christ. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was with God. And then verse 14 says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. Amen. First we see by waiting on God and then by wanting God. How many here really wants I'm not talking about y'all. 
I imagine this would be going out on YouTube if everything works right. But how many wants God all the time in their life? Oh, whatever. But do we really and truly want God to be with us every step of the way? I have a way of saying it. I say this. Let the sails of your heart come down. And I now says, well, sail both raise them up. Yeah, but God says let them down. So we can let them down. Let the sails of your heart, let it down. And let the Holy Ghost blow upon the sails of your heart. Because when you allow the Holy Ghost to blow upon the sails of your heart, the Holy Ghost is going to blow you in the right direction and take you right where God wants you to be. And, not, and through by doing this, you're going to receive the blessings you never thought you were worthy to receive. And you say, preacher, what I'm going to do? Have a gold Cadillac? No, but you might have a new heart. And if God wants you to have a gold, I don't want a gold Cadillac. Can you see me going down the road with a gold Cadillac? I'd have people with a chisel and a hammer just get some of that gold. Chucks, let them have it. And I'd get my pick up truck and just go down the road. But by wanting God, prayer can release one's tension in time of great emotional stress. How many of y'all have ever been in such emotional stress that, that you just almost like you're just sweating big old drops? Well, I, I, I remember when God was calling me into the ministry. And by the way, I just didn't jump in without our nails following me and agreeing with me. Because when God puts two together, major decisions got to be made by two. Where two or more are gathered, he's in the midst, all right? And I remember when I was getting ready, I was getting ready to tell my partner, I'm quitting. I'm quitting the business. And, and I'm going into the ministry. I don't think he believed me. But the day, last day, I had to do it because God was calling me into the ministry. You know when God is calling you. And I had to go sign the papers to sign sign the papers, taking my name off everything and and, 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 and letting him have it. And I didn't take any equipment, I didn't take any trucks. All I did was take enough money to go to the seminary with me and Inez and Melissa was about yay big and three other kids. And my heart was beating so much I got a mad my brain headache. Because I was stepping into something that I had no knowing what I was stepping into. But I knew God was calling me and I had enough faith to believe that if God is doing the calling that God is going to be able to sustain over the years and He has not let me down at one time. Amen. Amen. By wanting God. Does that mean I was perfect? No, that means I made a whole lot of mistakes. Does that mean I'm going to still make mistakes? Yes, I'm going to still make mistakes because I'm a human being. But I'm going to be making mistakes because I want to follow God and I want to try to get myself out of the way and let God have it. And I hope you understand what I just said. God respects you and won't force Himself upon you or anyone else. When one wants God in their lives, God is there. Call God. And God will be there. I remember when I was 26, I think it's time to say this. Like I said, at that time, we were in electrical business, we were doing quite well. I wasn't married at the time. I wasn't blessed yet. And I believe God looked up into heavens and He picked out the brightest star. And He gave me that brightest star. He gave that star to me. It was on edge. And I believe that. But I remember when I was 26, drunk as a skunk, driving a brand new car in Slidell, going down that highway, drunk as a skunk. I had enough of everything. And I said, God, that thing was going pretty fast. Didn't it? I said, God, if you're real, I need some help. Reach down and touch me. God reached down and he touched this poor miserable soul. And he lifted this poor miserable soul out of the pits of hell. And he gave me new life. Yes. By wanting God. 
When one wants God, they can't be moved. They become a rock. The world has lost its appeal to them. What in the world does the world have that I want? Well, how about a hundred pounds of gold? If I had a hundred pounds of gold, I'd have to have a wheelbarrow to push it. And if I had a hundred pounds of gold and a wheelbarrow pushing it, other people want the gold. It's better off for me to get in my truck, leave the wheelbarrow and the gold alone, than go to, go to McDonald's and get 55 cent coffee. Amen. 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 What does this world have to offer? Nothing. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to make the devil mad. Y'all know what it is? I'm going to make the devil mad because I'm going to use what the world has to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ Amen. to a lost Amen. 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 2015 can be a joyous year when one waits on God, when one wants God. Remember, only the faithful work we do for God has an eternal value. Wealth, honor, prestige adds nothing to our value in God's sight. You are valuable to God. I want you to say it. Say, I am valuable to God. I am valuable to God. In Jesus' name, amen.